Hi, my name is Steve Clapham and welcome to another of our Valuation 101 videos. And I'm going to conclude this series by looking at other valuation multiples, the, the, the ones that I haven't covered to date in our look at both equity multiples and enterprise value based multiples. So we address the free cash flow yield to EV, because we talked about there being two methods of using free cash flow, free cash flow to equity and free cash flow to EV. The advantage of using EV being that it's more comparable across stocks because it takes out the different capital structures, especially important in an era of low interest rates. And this, I think, is one of the most popular valuation tools among sophisticated investors. But what I haven't mentioned is the CAPE ratio. This is the cyclically adjusted PE or 10 year PE. It's most commonly used to value markets. And obviously we've been in a period, we're sitting in 2021, we've been in a period where we've had re-rating for the last decade or so. Um, so obviously you would expect the CAPE to be rising. And because we've got very low interest rates, it's very, expected that the, the, the CAPE would be high today relative to history. And many, many commentators will tell you that a high CAPE ratio means lower returns going forward. And that may well be true today. That may well be true. But do remember that point that the interest rates are obviously incredibly important in valuing stock markets. I also like to look at price to peak earnings. It's a sense check. You can also use it for markets. It's been used here by John Hussman for markets. But where you've got a cyclical company, it's quite important to think about what you're paying today relative to the peak earnings that it's earned in the past. And just remember that stock market multiples are not at I said useless in the slide, they're not useless, but they're, they're not so helpful in isolation. One company may have a higher PE, but a different asset backing. So you've always got to look at the things in the round. Just look at this example of a company that's got asset backing. Take two New York cab companies. Both have got 20 medallions. They've both got 20 cabs. Company A bought its cabs in 2015. Company B bought its cabs in 2010. They've both got EBITDA of $500,000, but A has earnings of 200,000 and B has earnings of 240,000. B's obviously earning more money because its cabs are older. And which is more valuable? B is going to look cheaper on PE, A is going to look dearer on PE. Both have the same EV EBITDA. But A, although it's got a lower earnings per share and looks dearer, is actually the more valuable business because you're buying more valuable assets. And a business like this is in the business of turning over its assets and its assets are really important. So don't use multiples in isolation. Always think about the business that you're, that you're buying and think about what else could be relevant. And this example is a, obviously it's a made up example. It's a great illustration of why you shouldn't use just a, a multiple in, in isolation. Thanks for watching. I hope you found these videos helpful and useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.